Elephant Island holds a very special place in my heart. It's a place of first. The first landmass I saw after crossing the Drake Passage in 2009. The first flying penguin I photographed. My first zodiac ride. The first penguin rookery I ever saw. And the first time I smelled penguin guano. For a lot of folks visiting Antarctica, depending on the itinerary, it's either the first place they will see on their way down or the last place they will see on their way back. Early in the morning, I made my way to the ship's eighth deck to photograph what I remembered to be a rare bird that was flying around the ship. Well, this morning, uh, as you can see, it's a bit uh, windy on the ship. Uh, we're sailing towards Elephant Island, uh, and the weather's not that nice, uh, but we're out of Antarctica. It was pretty cold at the bow. The crew had spread some salt on the deck. I finally got my shot of the Pintado, or Cape Petrel, a beautiful small bird that appears to have a QR code painted on its back, and I felt pretty good. Only to realize as we were making our way towards Elephant Island that there were flocks of Pintados all over the place. It's amazing how your memory can play tricks on you. As we got closer to Elephant Island, we could see dozens of whale spouts. We were about to witness something pretty incredible. As the whales were feeding all around us, it attracted all sorts of marine birds, pintados included. We sailed through the feeding area to get to Elephant Island. When we got there, we spent some time on the cruise ship photographing Point Wild. It was too windy for Zodiac cruises. First time I've set foot in this area of the world in 2009. That was the first landing that we did. Uh, not landing, we actually went for Zodiacs. Uh, so we're back at Elephant Island. And... I need a bird in the sky. You know, when you want one, they're never there. Elephant Island played a crucial role in Antarctica exploration history in the most incredible survival story ever, in my opinion. In the middle of April 1916, the crew of 28 men of the Endurance landed at Point Wild in three whaling boats, the size of small lifeboats, after drifting on ice floes for five and a half months following the loss of their ship, which was crushed by ice at the end of October 1915. Once there, Sir Ernest Shackleton took five men and one whaling boat, the James Curd, and set out for the island of South Georgia. Shackleton left Frank Wilde, his right-hand man and second-in-command, in charge of the other 21 men who stayed on Elephant Island waiting to be rescued. Shackleton was successful in reaching South Georgia after more than two and a half weeks sailing in rough seas. After making the same trek on a cruise ship, you know that it took some pretty savvy navigation and sailing skills to accomplish this feat. The remaining 22 men, who had stayed behind at Point Wild, were rescued on the third attempt, four months later, by a Chilean Navy ship, the Yelko. A bust of Captain Luis Alberto Pardo, the captain of the Yelko, has been erected at Point Wild. Shackleton did not lose a single crew in this whole ordeal. A feat of endurance. When we left Elephant Island, we sailed again through the feeding field. The naturalists on board estimated that over 150 fin whales, the second largest mammals to ever live on the planet, were feeding in the area. The sea was covered in whale spouts, and there were a lot of birds. We were making our way to South Georgia, but we had one more stop before we got there, the South Orkney Islands. <laughs> 